Welcome to another episode of Bobby's Cryptid Corner. Hey, everybody. I'm Jamie. I'm Jamie. <laughs> and that's Bobby. We're, we're just here to have fun, guys. He's so shy. I know, don't this be is going to be a casual one, huh? We've already, we've already uh, got the vices flowing, it seems. We do, we do, we do. We, we've been smoking, we've been drinking, you know Isis. what I'm saying? So we're going to do a candle uh, show and tell. Yeah, we're going to do show and tell of some things because mm-hmm. we like candles and do stuff and we talk about it off camera, but we wanted to share it with you guys, so. This is quality content. I know, right? I know. Brie, yeah. Brie, go ahead. Show them, show them your shit. This is new. I just found this in my car today. Oh my God. Okay. I'm surprised it didn't melt. I know. It's called the Coastal Tides. Oh my God. It smells amazing. And then the candles I always burn, but Mm -hmm. are different things. Um, This one is Abundance from Aloha Bay, the Chakra Candle. Mm -hmm. These are my favorite. And which chakra is that, ma'am? Oh, this is Ajna. So this is your throat chakra. Oh, perfect for a podcast. No, mm. yes, Ajna, Vashuda, Ajna. Okay, what else you got? Uh, lots of crystals. That's it for me. Oh, that's all for you. Okay, okay, then I'll go. So I have brought my opalite tower for my anxiety. Oh, was I supposed to show my crystals? You could if you want to. I don't have candles. Okay, gotcha. I, I brought my, my bloodstone star for creativity for our podcast but then I also thought that we could do like maybe like a nice little cleansing that we needed maybe some like aura cleansing so I did bring a nice little incense and Mm. it's not just cleansing but it's for good fortune what's the flavor flavor wait is there money on that yeah for good fortune and it's purple yeah for good fortune it is so pimping I know so I thought I was like I feel a pimp it honestly smells like a pimp I'm not gonna lie it smells super manly, like kind of Axe body spray vibes yeah. to it, but I'm yeah. into middle, it. Middle and school locker room. Very much. But I also really enjoy it because I'm weird and gross. So we'll just do a nice little, a little spiritual, maybe bring some money into our lives right now. You know what I'm saying? A little good fortune. And yeah. that's, and that's my show and tell for the day, you guys. I have no idea what either of you just said, <laughs> to be honest. So that's why I, I am the, uh, the uh, skeptic, I guess. Okay. Or the, the, the uninformed. Well, the I was going to say, you have questions about this stuff, about our weird crystals and our things. Yeah. So why don't, let, why me don't be, we... let me be the voice of the people here. So why don't you ask us questions about what we got fucking, our weird okay. fucking give me shit. Give me like a 30 second elevator pitch on, or not pitch, but you know, like, yeah, give me the Reader's Digest version of uh, chakras, I guess. Ooh, like, Brie, what is Brie, that, what is that, what does that Brie even can mean? do that. Brie can do that. That's chakras pretty. are like meridian zones in your body where energy flows in and out. So like we have an auric field, right? Where your auric, auric field, auric, like your aura. Oh. aura. Auric. Gotcha. Okay. It's like your energy body. You have, I think this has maybe even been scientifically proven that like you, it's you not radiate. just heat that yeah. you're radiating off, but Frequency. it's like your literal energy mm-hmm. your frequency so these are different zones in the body that control different parts of your body and different um i guess like emotional centers so you have your root chakra which is connected to the earth and that's all like grounding security that's the muladhara Um, You have your sacral chakra, which is like where your sex organs are. So that's like your passion, your feeling. Um, uh, Even creativity, I guess, could could grow from there. It's your fertile. It's like your sexual desire. 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 Yes. Then you have your solar plexus, which is your middle. Um, That's all about your creativity, what you're cooking up. And if that flows or not, it's really interesting. Also, if you're open or closed, because like the first thing people do when they shut down is you cross your arms. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, you're literally blocking your, your solar plexus. You're like, don't fuck with me. And then you have your heart chakra, your anahata. And that of course is love, but not just love for others. It's love for yourself. Everything in the universe comes from love. Um, You have your, um, your Ajna, which is your throat chakra, of course, speaking. You have your third eye, which is Vashuddha, seeing your vision. 
And then you have your Swahasara, which is the crown chakra. So like your connection from the earth to above. So when all these things are flowing, everything's working well. And then you can tell when you have certain blocks in your body where you're off balance. So like, I feel like it's really rare to have just like all of your energy centers totally open like you're just perfect in life like that's not a thing no especially for me I feel like I can always focus on one part of my life but I usually find it hard to To balance everything it's like if my creativity is full-blown chances are that like my house is a mess you know it's like it's like things like that so it's like you can tell when you have blockages and others and so candles crystals of course meditation can all help so with that yeah let's say you uh notice that you uh like uh, are lacking in one of your chakras mm-hmm. are there different are there different things you can do to remedy that depending on which chakra it is or is there a one size fits all approach how does mm-hmm. that work i'm sure that meditation could be a one size fits, fits all. all yeah um but people use things like crystals and candles. Like there's certain crystals that you place on your, on your chakra area that helps, you know, open up that area. And there's, you know, certain candles that have certain uh, like uh, oils and stuff inside of it that can help open up those things. So there's different things that you can use to open up any of these areas. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't think this is talked about or proven, but I feel like you're (laughs) born what we're into right it's just funny like, I, I don't feel like it like i don't think this is proven like I, i'm sorry to go ahead i'm not i really this don't cool. this is just how i feel um all right I, if it works I it think, works yeah I, no i just think that you like you can be born with maybe ancestral trauma i think that can carry on into your chakras so maybe if you can cleanse and really work on a chakra it might be easier for that to be clogged yeah what's it called like Ep- a constant i believe I guess it is sins of the father where you're like inheriting the negative vibes or experiences of your mm-hmm. ancestors in yeah. your own life. And it happens. It's like people with rape usually have like the same issues in their chakra. Of course, it's going to be your sacral because that's your sex organs, mm-hmm. but it's also going to be your root chakra because that's like you're grounding your security, most likely going to be your heart chakra. You're probably closed off, you know, maybe even your throat chakra because you feel like you don't have a voice. So like those types of um, trauma also seem to have a pattern in your chakras. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you can like inherit these from your parents, like, like various strengths and various chakras? More like your previous selves per se, not necessarily like your, not like a DNA parents thing, but more of like different versions of yourself. So like you work, like your chakra is more in line with your soul than it is, let's say with your body. And so you're carrying that trauma throughout these different versions of yourself. Wait, when you say versions of yourself, are you saying like, like within this current, like, are, are we talking like different versions of ourselves within this current existence? Or are we talking past lives or what? Past what, lives. I'm, I'm trying to follow here. No, it could okay. probably be all. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to say right. all of it and none of it at the same time. But I'm thinking more like the past lives kind of thing. Like my my soul is in this human Jamie, Jamie body right now. Whatever it was before that was taken and also brought into here with me. And that includes my chakras. Which but I also, also think. T- Go ahead. Time is not linear, so it's all like sandwiched. So I was gonna say that Breeze and Jamie's on top of each other. Yeah, I was gonna say everything is happening all at the same time. Yes, exactly. I was was literally gonna say the same thing that the past isn't necessarily the past; Past. it's also simultaneous. But in our perception, yes, a past life. Yeah. See, I can hang with this hippie shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. I know, I know more than you And the thing about it is, is it's like layers on layers though. Like you start with one thing and then you get into this other thing. So we're talking about chakras and all of a sudden it's about how all of our past and future lives and present lives are happening simultaneously. Now, is this Kundalini that we're talking about here? Is that I what switched that is? those around. Ajna, third eye, throat is Vashuda. Just okay. words wise, just so you guys know. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sanskrit wise. I'm, I'm, I'm writing all this down. Okay. Okay. Just Ask, Sanskrit wise. This is Mashita. What was your question, Bobby? This is Ashna. Um, is this Kundalini? Is that the uh this the school of thought here? 
the kundalini the rising snake it flows in that energy and rises up and activates all those chakras this but, is just like jim morrison lyrics yeah yeah why not <laughs> yeah. yeah all right i love the doors so like i'm down <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah um but i think that we all have chakras but kundalini energy isn't necessarily always flowing in all people but when it does, yes, you're activating. But when you say it's not flowing, is it something you have to be cognizant of to like manipulate or emphasize or protrude consciously out? Both. Or like, let's say, let's say me, for example, this is the first time I'm really hearing about this. Mm -hmm. Like, would, do I still have all of these things regardless of the fact mm -hmm. that I don't really, for lack of a better phrase i don't really know what you guys are talking about but i do yes. but you know what i'm saying yes yes like you don't uh. preach and subscribe to it and look into it you you vaguely know that it's something that exists right i talk to you guys pretty regularly so. it, no yeah. absolutely it's like if you really think about it i'm sure that you can identify what parts of your chakras are open and what parts are closed or at least um polluted in a sense like dense not where the energy isn't flowing the way that it should Okay, let's go. Um, let's go. Let's start at crown. Okay, is that the what top. it was? The, yep. the crown. The crown chakra? up here. Crown chakra. And this is your okay, we'll um, diagram connection. It. This is your connection to you know, as above, so below kind of stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like like spiritual higher deities or uh, yeah energies, universal mm -hmm. consciousness, all of that. Okay. Okay. Your connection um, to then, your higher self. And then I would, uh, you know, I'm just kind. Of, Kind of speculating here so we got that and then your your pineal your uh third eye mm -hmm. that's your ability to kind of see past like you it's your way of you see the material world through your your physical eyes spiritual your eye. windows into the material world but your spiritual eye you can see like the um how, what's the best way to put like the the subdued layer of this almost like it's connected directly to the crown right so like you can see the influence of the crown into the third eye manifesting in the in the material world right yeah i think you can see beyond the, the physicality veil. of things yeah. the veil that's not a great way always the veil because always, then we yeah. could be like always seeing ghosts but yes always well, like I the underlying the yeah. tones the but bigger picture it doesn't even have to be ghosts though. I'm just talking about like, uh, That's like what I was saying. yeah. you could just, say like, like it, there are people, me being one of them, I believe that we are in a constant, well, not constant, but I feel like we are in a more amped up spiritual warfare right now. Currently, yes, hundred percent. And most people would think I'm fucking nuts for even saying that. Because their third eye is like, not open. No, that's Christian are... word, the words, the words of Christians have been saying that you're in a spiritual warfare for a century. Right, so I but that, don't that like can that. That, but that, but, but ultimately, what isn't that just being able to identify the various factions of of higher energies being yeah, combative I think, in it, and yes. it displaying itself in I, the material world? Yes, it's a fight for your soul. That's what a spiritual warfare is. Right, it's a fight for your soul, good or evil. You pick a side. The demons are the fighting duality. for your soul. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we want to get into the whole Christian battle of it at the current well, moment. I'm just saying that but the like, word go there after spiritual warfare, that's where that comes from. And that's where okay. like born again Christians have been pushing that for a long time. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, just, I mean, there's there's I definitely say it. That's okay, the only reason me, why. Let me like But it's tr it's choose, fine. It's more it's like your you your ability to acknowledge the more like ethereal forces that are playing out in the real world if that makes sense like yes the, the going back to the crown thing the as above so below thing like you can see whatever is happening above and how it is interacting below is that right but know, also just... like connected to intuition mm -hmm. you're right you're knowing okay. 
clairsentience. We've all yeah. had those moments. Yeah. So where, it's that yeah. connection to your higher self and you're a- with that, you're able to have a, 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 a higher sight of what's going on. You have more mm-hmm. of like a bird's eye view than, than necessarily right, right. just seeing what's, str- what's street level. Right. Not taking it at face value. You're a like, no, picture. there's a bigger picture. There's more going on here. Or like so, if you meet someone and everyone's like, oh my God, they're so amazing. And inside you're like, but there's something off about that person. Like you can sense their energy. You can sense something else that's deeper and then what's just a face Then yeah. it's Sketchy. like, just, Mm -hmm. your third eye is helping you out it's like Mm -hmm. look i'm gonna it's a different type of vision it's a knowing well i think a lot of people would call it like their gut feeling your gut feeling is very much bobby was saying yes yeah yeah but also could it be affiliated with like the ability to see like the interconnection and systems of things and various things like various uh uh functions of various principles and and in schools and like some people are like very compartmentalized and they don't see how that all interacts Mm -hmm. so that would be like a weak uh what what's where are we talking about right now third eye like they don't see big picture like if you like just to i guess a metaphor would be like if you study geography it's geography is literally how weather interacts with uh geology how it interacts with human movement how it interacts mm-hmm. like so many different um schools in in their full like how they all integrate with each other and affect each other whereas like if you study strictly one of those things you might get a little bit of those other things but it's not you know it's not laid out specifically for the whole picture. absolutely right. it's okay. like it's like to be the opposite of having an open third eye could literally be like i get the vision of of a horse with blinders Mm -hmm. like that's like what I envision is like a horse with blinders where it's only one focus it's just in front of you and I think the more that you practice this third eye which I feel like is probably happening to Bobby that's just like a feeling I get blinders are starting to that um no forever no they've been off but I was gonna say Mm. no I was gonna say what's happening I think is you literally will see to the extent of the veil that we're talking about. Like there's this, there's like all these different like steps and layers to this. And I feel like- Yeah, it's not like your third eye just opens and everything comes in at once. It's like you People slowly... think it does. Some people say like, oh, I'm a third eye is a blown open. Like it rushed, and, but I think more levels to way... it. It's like the curtain slowly starts to come up. Yes, an... but in extreme, extreme situations, you will see entities. Oh, yeah. You will I see a, orbs. You will see a, ghosts. No, I'm a no nonsense guy that's in love with nonsense. Exactly. Or, um, I think a really common thread with people when they start to do this is they start to have sleep paralysis. This happens to a lot of people. And I think that's like, you're literally starting to see beyond this veil we're talking about. And then like lower entities, if it's not, depends on the sleep paralysis situation, but I think in a lot of cases, like lower entities, it's like you become on the radar and then they're like, what the fuck is this person doing? And then like they an like rush target. to you. Yeah, they like run like, to you. So energy, how do you guys, it now. how do you guys hash out and kind of grapple with, I guess, like the more secular, like psychological explanations of this stuff? I think that they, those two can coexist. It's kind of mm-hmm. like what we were talking about last episode where it's like, uh, you know, science is a, a protocol, but we don't have the visibility or the advancement of it to scientifically explain some of the things that we're talking about talking about yeah even though we might try to yes well i also feel like science is we say science but really it's just a way for us to understand what's happening yeah i feel like people tend to think that yeah people tend to think that the word science takes away from the magic of something and i don't believe that no. Mm-hmm. To say that there's not a God because you understand how things are multiplying and how things are working doesn't mean that there isn't a magic behind what is happening. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So like to me, like I think like science can be interchangeable. And I just think I feel like we really use that word to say like it's, it's like the, the opposite of magic. Yeah. It's like, oh no, this is what it is. It's science. But like yeah. but, it's really yeah, just it- understanding. I've never understood how people talk about how like you can't um, 
like you can't be loyal to both faith and science. I'm like, like there's they always talk about how that's like that, the, yeah. the great, the great schism of history is like mm -hmm. the battle between the that. enlightenment yeah. and in the spiritual world. It's like, I, yeah, but I think that they can easily coexist. And I think they that they're can. easily interchangeable they and relatable. Like, so for instance, I think science can get kind of cynical in that sense. Mm -hmm. I don't, I got into like the kind of, it's, it's like, a bit of an annoying subculture on the internet now, but I was into like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and all those, like the whole atheist movement for a while yeah. there. And I'm just like, now it's just like, uh, I don't know, it doesn't do it for me. And, and I don't, I just don't buy into it to that material level. So I, I guess the example I was going to use is like a lot of people, like there's this mythology, which is a whole different topic we could go into as well mm -hmm. how mythology may not be exactly how it happened in the past but that doesn't matter because the mythology itself affects the future in some way um but what i was going to say is a lot of people are like come out and say well like oh you know joan of arc didn't actually talk to any spiritual entities or saints or anything she was actually just a schizophrenic or something like that just in this, as an example and it's mm -hmm. like well maybe but it doesn't change the outcome if we subscribe to the true historical narrative or mythology of it on some level it doesn't change the outcome of what actually happened in the material world with mm -hmm. her you know what so, i mean so i think we have this thing where it's called god of the gap theory where a lot of people who are religious and we've used this before on the podcast they they something that they can't explain they yell god right or something that they can't explain we like to yell aliens and i think that in today's society one thing that happens is something happens with humans and we can't explain it or understand it. And so now we throw psychology at it, right? So it's psychology of the gap theory. We don't understand it. So she must be schizophrenic or right. it, it, to me personally, when people do stuff like that, it seems lazy. Like instead of just mm -hmm. investigating out. it, exactly. It seems like so much of a cop out and it, it makes it why mental health is so not important in our society because we use it as a cop out for so many things. It's not properly looked into or properly nurtured. So you have a lot of people who are misdiagnosed diagnosed and things like that, where if they actually would have looked into it, maybe that wasn't the case whatsoever. So I think that we have a, a big problem of people just using it as an excuse for things these days. And so that's, we, we tend to see that right now because people have these crazy wild stories. I saw a UFO, I was abducted by aliens. Oh, they have to be crazy. Or you can get into like just the um, kind of going back almost to the whole battle for your soul kind of thing. It's like, mm -hmm. Okay, well, we have these kids today that are like, you know, a lot of times it's boys, just wild, rambunctious, creative, can't sit still, can't pay attention in class. Maybe. And that's literally their like inherent, like uh, self manifesting at that age and interacting with the world. But in order to suppress that, we feed them a bunch of pills and tell them to like, you know, sit there and, and pay attention or whatever. Well, so it's, it's like you try to manipulate it's almost like like science in that context like manipulates the actual like um like the longing of the soul or something like that I don't well know. no absolutely it does and a lot of people why they have this big issue with psychology and all of these kind of pills that kind of mess with your head and stuff like this is because it's changing you on a biological level it's completely changing the human being that you are it's changing the way you act to the things that you do the things that you like and the things that you dislike so a lot of people assume that when the government is using these things as an excuse for people like these young kids and these add you know they're using these pills to change who they are as a person so they're more manageable and more controllable and in the right. big scale of things, what do we always say that the government wants? The government wants us to be controllable and manageable. So it seems that they're just starting sooner and sooner. But it's interesting because you have these kids who have this like ADD, ADHD now, but you have all these children who stay inside and play video games and can't get out their energy and things like that. So it's like mm -hmm. they're almost fostering and creating this cycle of turning these kids into things that can't sit down. I think there's oh. an opposite side to that as well, though. Give there's also people too. that yeah. haven't been diagnosed like that and could have actually benefited exactly. from and that's that diagnosis. Yeah. And I think there's just, there's a line here between people that couldn't benefit and people that can misuse and not benefit. Exactly. And it, so yeah. I, if someone would have given me ADHD medication in high school, I guarantee you I would have actually stayed like and, learned and learned something. And it's yeah, not no. until I've been older where I realized like I had 
I was diagnosed with things when I was 14 years old. And if only it was a different diagnosis, I think that life. my life exactly. would have been hundred percent same, incredibly same. different, same. incredibly different. So the takeaway here is like, it's, um, it's neither good nor bad. It's case by case. And I think the, the issue is the one size fits all approach. Like exactly. Yeah, the, exactly. I, I agree. And yeah. And I, trust me, I am a fan of various pharmaceutical drugs that have helped me out in the last few years, not to go fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, not that I'm a super crazy, but you know, like antidepressants. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, of course. Every now and again. Um, so yeah. And I, I, I don't Depression. think it's, I don't think it's um, useful to vilify one side or the other. Absolutely not. Right. Um, and that's the thing, though. It's like that. But we do that because we either take advantage of people and we zombie them out or, or people do things yeah. and it helps them. And we we then victimize or not victimize, but we vilify the fact that people take medication yep. that helps them and improves their life. And then now you have a whole group of people that have mental issues and they would rather sit and suffer than take help. something mm -hmm. that makes them feel better. There is a regimen. You can take the right thing at the right dosage. Well, it's like the same and thing do with, better. with like, okay, remember when like the president or whatever was taking fucking antidepressants and everyone made like a big deal about, oh my God, the president might be taking antidepressants. Like, oh, but that's a normal fucking thing for people in our if society. If I was the president, I would be on so many that's drugs. It's not even funny. And they made like a big deal. Like, oh my God, like, oh my God, we can't, we can't position. let this be public knowledge because if they know he's on antidepressants, like, holy shit, if I was running the country, I'd be depressed as shit too like, holy like mental health shame yes. give me that morphine so wrong that is so yeah. wrong it is on so many levels and that's that's the problem that we have we have mental health shaming and then we have them using that shame putting it on people inside of this culture and this community we're talking about aliens and ufos and so then it's just vilifying on vilifying on vilifying but it's but, like but what's the answer though like do we hold off drugs at a certain age till a certain age do we identify the issue who are the and three like, of us to solve that problem but, but like what is the like it, again it just depends like what is the itch issue what is the magnitude exactly, of the issues? Yeah. what are the long-term effects what is the cost benefit analysis who's being incentivized by pushing these drugs on the kids like there's all kinds of different variables there it's too layers on layers so it's like and then it's like okay well i'm going to medicate my kid because he's rambunctious and then i'm going to he's going to come home and i'm going to let him sit on a screen for like six hours and then sit him to bed it's like some of it boils down to like, okay, how involved are you in like monitoring mm -hmm. that kind of behavior? And Lazy how, parenting. What are you, what are you exactly. doing as iPad a parent kids. to let kids go out and get that energy out? And then maybe they'll be, it, that's the thing is like, I don't, I, I think that mental pharmaceuticals are fine for the right people and the, the right, right dosage and the right circumstances, but the dependency and the culture around pushing it on every little thing can exactly. create That's the problem. Cre create a problem as well which is again just incentivized and in, you know markets and you know lobbying and all kinds of things but exactly. everything that can be of benefit i think to the people is always going to be abused and taken advantage of and then really i mean like you can take that down to the simplest things like symbolism and it's like you know in the ancient times things weren't so bad you know like the Nazi emblem without it being turned was ancient, ancient, ancient. You go back in Tibetan times, they've yeah, been using this culturally and then they death. turn it and now it's and now this. It's this vilifying or like thing, yeah. the devil star, the pentagram, pentagram that comes from literally the five different elements and it all being encompassed and being able to connect with source and it, that gets turned. And it's like all of that, the Illuminati really just means the enlightened ones. It's like, we as humans tend to find something good, exploit it, and then to the point where it creates a divide. And you either, it. yeah, and you either like doing good or it's like all bad. And it's mm -hmm. just like, like we literally suck at balance so much. Um, what do you, let me, not to, this is kind of a shift gears, but not really, because I want to bring it. it back. What do you guys think about the whole like indigo kid, like, is it the star children or you know what i'm talking star about star seeds, star seeds rainbow and, children yeah all that i shit, thought you listened to our podcast yeah god bobby we've I talked do. about all these I things do. Uh, this does ring a bell now that i'm bringing it up so me but, I, 
new aura who this yeah new aura who this so give me give me give me a more specific question than just abroad what's what about so on, on some level it seems like an excuse for like parents to project their own like let's glorify myself through my child kind of thing mm, yes but then that's on, part on, of it 100 percent. the people who are very obsessed it's just like it's just it, like sure. white moms thinking that their kid is god's gift Special. or whatever yes, yes. yeah because everyone every parent does that to some degree they're yes. like yes. like whenever yes. your friends start having kids you're like all right cool i'm glad you're happy please shut the fuck about it about your kid i don't care it's so I'm funny not. that you say that because this is exactly what brie is talking about you're taking something that's very real star seeds rainbow children these things and it's being exploited by this culture of i mean this in the nicest way possible white people but white moms who are like oh my god my kid oh they're the worst is from space but that's what but that's what she's saying though we take this thing that's good and we're squeezing the fucking life out of it right I, and I, so there's a, there's a truth to all of these things and i think that a lot of people just use it as an excuse for their kids behaving badly sometimes or yeah. use it as a way to parent their child in a certain way and things like that so it's one of those other things just like the psychology bullshit where they take it and they're just using it as some sort of an excuse for something yeah it's all they just you're you're just tapping into some like study but of could that be better operating sure. system it, that's the thing it could be that's the problem it goes back to the one size fits all thing um, but but my point about the star kids and the indigo children and the the black eyed kids or whatever that's a different not, thing. But. That's yeah, not. That one that one's dark. That one's dark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not. We'll get, we'll get there in a second. We'll get there. Right? Second. This yeah. is the cryptid corner. Indigo, we talk about. rainbow, yeah. um, so, crystal, and star star seed. seed. I I I feel I don't know where I heard it or read it, but it's like a lot of these kids that assuming that these are real children that have some sort of connection to a higher agenda or spiritual thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, how much of this are we, how much of those kids, assuming that they're real, are we just like pumping full of medicines and pharmaceuticals? And they're just imagining the shit. Yeah. Or the, it's just like, Oh, well, my kids like kind of, an outsider and super smart and socially awkward and you know but like brilliant or whatever but like Asperger's. we want him to conform and function in society and and be more social and, and be a part of a group and accepted so or my kids acting crazy and saying crazy things like i have a friend that guy got he we all thought in eighth grade we all thought he was nuts because one day he started getting really into like the symbolism of like Led Zeppelin and like, mm. and like, um, where you are now in life. Like, kind of like, like, yeah. Right. <laughs> ancient, ancient occultism through rock lyrics and things like that. And he was That's really dope. into it. So he started he early. talked about it all the time. And I remember looking at all my friends at the lunch table in like eighth grade, be like, dude, what the fuck happened to Mike? Like, he's kind of crazy now. <laughs> Next thing we know, he leaves for a few months, comes back and he's like, kind of a shell of himself because he got diagnosed with a chemical imbalance man and they pumped him full of like lithium or something you know? something like that whereas like it's like That's i get sex. it on some level you need your child to like be able to function in society and like fend for themselves and and be productive members that are accepted by the group but yeah how much of this like kind of outside the box thinking just on a rudimentary level are we suppressing by remedying remedying that or like calling them crazy or you know what I mean mm -hmm. no uh, you know what I'll give you a good example so when I was probably about like 13 14 years old I was misdiagnosed as being bipolar and I went to a psychiatrist and I was put on a bunch of fucking bipolar meds and none of them worked I was still acting bipolar so this doctor kept giving me stronger and stronger and stronger medications and it got to the point where I was on these things that were like anti-psychotics you ever seen the movie being John Malkovich where he sits in the back mm -hmm. of his head and lives his life that was mm -hmm. my life on that medicine like it happens. And I felt like I had no control over brushing my hair, what clothes I put on, what I said when I went to school, I was not myself at all. And this one was 13 fucking 14 years old. It's like your consciousness is completely disconnected from disconnected your completely. physical activity. I remember looking yeah. in the mirror and seeing the person in the mirror and it was not me controlling it. It was like the most surreal, craziest thing in my life. And I've never trust pharmaceuticals ever fucking since. <laughs> Which okay. is really sad though, because 
I don't want to talk about. So let's no, go, go, go. About. Yeah, get personal with it. It doesn't bother me. Like people need to know. Like, how are we supposed to fix these things if we don't talk about it? You know what I mean? Like, how is society and culture supposed to fix? By the these way, none of us are doctors. No, oh, yeah, none of us are doctors. These are our own experiences. Do not take medical no, advice from me. It's it's just it's true. There are some people that I think are just meant to write scripts, you know, and um. It's sad that a doctor can put that type of mistrust in you into finding some type of help because even if you are very depressed or you're feeling a lot of anxiety, instead of trying to find your own balance, right. now you have gone so far off of that balance to the point of just suffering for it and that's not fair to you it, it's almost a result of like the 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 fallacy and folly and and or corruption of man mm -hmm. um because if you flip that around to the spiritual side of things you can do the same exact thing like you could be like well i'm not i'm not spiritual because i met someone that was spiritual who is a total hypocrite and mm -hmm. doesn't follow practice what they preach at all so it's all bullshit so we're going to mm -hmm. throw the baby yep. out with the bathwater. so it goes both ways it seems it's all about finding that balance on some level absolutely and, and taking it case by case and not having one and not the other i think that's another thing i think a big part of the spiritual community as much as I think that they want to help people heal, I think that there are a lot of people that also shame mental health in a type of medical condition. Mm -hmm. It's only seen as like going back to chakras, like these things are imbalanced or like you just need to cleanse your aura or like you must have like a something hanging around you. That could be mm -hmm. true, but at you what also point- need help. Yeah, exactly. at what right, point right, do yeah. you actually need help? At what point do we take a chemical imbalance in your head the same as having diabetes? You wouldn't tell someone that has diabetes, don't take your medicine. Mm -hmm. Just like meditate right. and shit. Like, just, like, yeah, yeah, we do that with you'll be fine. Yeah. But we do that with mental health. And it's like, I don't think that we're looking at it as a medical cancer away, condition. Though? Exactly, right? You probably could, but probably is that could, advisable yeah. to tell someone? Like, or is that someone, 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 someone that doesn't that, know yeah. how to do that? Like, you're like, we got to train you in how to meditate yeah. your like your, do uh, the cancer and FOMO like, away. like what's wrong with doing both like exactly. do what's something with, that yeah. you right. know can actually physically help you and then also reach out to those other alternative well, holistic well, healing you well, know? a lot of people say that the the spiritual side has this very big placebo effect on people right like it's not necessarily mm -hmm. that because the spiritual side is doing anything but you're in this mentality of if you believe it to be real so therefore it's working so they say that like some people who like miraculously like cure themselves of cancer right because they genuinely their head we're like i don't fucking have cancer mm -hmm. it's like kind of that same thing so you do mm -hmm. need that the, the both sides of it because spirituality faith whatever you want to call it this higher power this side of us obviously we have to have it you know it's this duality of us and, and it's you, very similar to the duality of the spiritual and this medicine in order to heal us you know what the major obstacle of that is it's tell me belief fear. yeah fear. for sure mm -hmm. you could want it but if someone tells you don't take your pills today, just meditate with me, I promise you, you're going to feel so much better. There's going to be that part of you that probably doesn't believe it. And then like, you're fucking afraid of everything. You're like, I'm going to fucking die. Mm -hmm. Chances you're not are it's not going to work. Seriously, exactly. It's not going to fucking work. <laughs> I, I, I really, really, really don't want to go down the road of our current state of affairs with pharmaceuticals at the moment. But I mm -hmm. will say, why not? vitamin d zinc quercetin hydroxychloroquine sunlight exercise good diet and any kind of modern western medical treatment why not both why is it one or the other or like the why other. is everything so binary you know because we're so fucking lazy like <laughs> jesus christ i'm 
taking a walk in the morning. And I feel like I'm doing the greatest thing for humanity just because I'm taking a walk in the morning. Like that's so fucking sad, but you know what? That's my truth. Well, and, but also in the lazy part (laughs) that you guys are talking about as well, it's like, we want whatever the one thing that's just going to fix it and let us go. We don't want to do the work. We don't want to, we don't want to take our time and make sure it's done. Right. Just give me the fucking pill and make sure it's done and over with. That's a big part of the problem. We live in this fast food culture of everything needs to be fast. Mm -hmm. Everything's on demand. This Amazon next day shipping bullshit. We have to have it right here, right now. We don't have Give time. Give me a pill and fix it. Yeah. But I'd like to speak on like things like depression, anxiety, bipolar, and ADD, ADHD. I don't necessarily feel like there are just external things that you can do to heal that. I'm no. sure people will be like, ah. uh, I just don't. I mean, I think that there's like long-term things you can do if you stick to them. I don't know, man. Remedy been, that stuff. You know what? I've been battling the battle for a really long time and I've and done Bree's very spiritual everything. Right. And I've, you know, uh, and I'll say in my, when I turned 30, <laughs> when I turned 30, I started getting anxiety. It's something that happened later in life. It's something that, uh, you know, I probably have always had and didn't realize it. But when I was 30, I had my first panic attack where I blacked out. And in that mm-hmm. moment, I realized that it's been horrible ever since you can ask Brie, there's been a times where we've been in a crowd and I lost her and I literally like cried and broke down and had a panic attack because I couldn't fucking find her. Like, mm-hmm. and I would never, I'm not that kind of person at all, but all of a sudden I have this mental health issue where I have, I struggle with anxiety and I don't go to a psychiatrist. I probably should. I smoke way too much weed and just assume that I'll be fine that's, if I keep doing that. Medicine. That, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So there's not, there's different things to do, but it's, it's something that I also struggle with as well. You know, I'm not some perfect human being who but I, I, I go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I'm just saying, I, I, I think the problem is the like vilifying all of like one or the other, like right. it, it could be many of, cause I straight, like, since we're talking about like personal medical histories, yeah, why not? like probably five years ago, I was like, I think I'm depressed. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm pretty sure. It's like, at the very least, I'm in- incredibly anxious. And I yeah. always kind of had been, but it was it was finally bubbling up to the point where I'm like, I don't fucking want to leave the house. Like, it, this is how I described it to the doctor. I said, I said, you know, when you're at like a movie or a concert and you're like, I paid for this and I want to see it out to the end and I want to enjoy it. But at the same time, I, I want to fucking wait for it to be over so yeah. I can leave. Mm-hmm. I felt like that no matter what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You know that feeling? I felt like that no matter what they're like, she's like, yeah, that's probably it's depression. depression. <laughs> and I filled out like a five question survey and she's like, yeah, you have high anxiety and light depression. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. She's like, here's yeah. a pill. And I'm like, I'm, I feel great now. I feel great know? now, exactly. But here's and the now- thing too about that is like, I started taking medication and it motivated me to be more productive, to exercise more, to get out more. To do so all it's like those this, other things. It's like this vicious cycle, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you don't do the things that are natural remedies, it's not going to fix whatever it is you have. And if there's something out there you can take that will get you off your ass to, to go change do that. your mentality, mm-hmm. whether it be temporarily or not, mm-hmm. you can start addressing it on a natural level too. That's right? the total thing though. And like when you're deep in depression or like bipolar anxiety, when you're deep in those feelings and like, trust me, I, I take medication, I won't lie. And I still struggle with it. It's the doing part for me, that's always been the hardest. Like my brain can be like, you need to do a million things. This is also part of having ADD. My brain's always like, I can fucking take 50 notes a day. No one understands this. I have so many fucking notebooks. Take so many notes. This is what you have to do today. It's just actually doing it. Probably not going to do it. And if you are really depressed, it's like, almost like you can't make yourself do it. And like, like, no matter how many times people are like, you're going to feel so much better if you like go outside, get some beautiful sunshine and, you know, like go for a run or like drink some water. But it's the fact that you literally can't make yourself. It's not that you don't understand that you should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Like, yeah. we're not stupid. We know mm-hmm. we should do those things. It's like, we physically can't. Like other people are like, yeah, you just do it. And you're like, see, life is so great. Like I'm not depressed because I'm running 17 miles a day and I'm eating healthy. And it's like, some people literally their brains are like, yeah, you should, but it's literally the act of doing that's hard. And mm-hmm. even every single step literally feels like hell. You might take two steps and then you're like, ah. yeah, you're like, I'm done. I've done it. I've got it's enough. Like, I can go back now. I would rather just sit in my hole and contemplate how I'm horrible at life than mm-hmm. doing Easier, it. More comfortable. And it's, it's like, that's the struggle that people don't understand. They just want to preach to you about like all these other things that you should do. But like when you're literally in that mental hole, you can't. Mm-hmm. Like people don't understand. Like when I say you can't, no, I understand yeah. like that's like a block, but it's like, you don't understand what it's like to be in that hole. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you just can't. And I've noticed that like a lot of people, like a lot of the more fringy, crazy shit that we like to talk about, a lot of people in those states of mind, the way they make like order out of chaos is they do build this like, this is how it is kind of mentality. Yeah. Mentality is like, well, the news said this and like, this is what happened to me. And any, any time you try to like penetrate or pop that bubble anyway, they like freak the fuck out. out. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, but like, I'm just telling you, like, this is the information I feel. I was like, I don't want to hear it because that, that interrupts they isolate my themselves. perception of reality. Yeah. They because isolate it's, themselves. It's, it's, I can't deal with another discomfort because I've already created this shell that I'm comfortable in. And I don't want to have to grapple with something I'm un- unfamiliar with basically. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's so many people that are so scared to talk about just this, let alone fucking it's Angel, scary. Like, I'm not going like, to lie. Like, and... It's... <laughs> well, and that's the thing, though. And that's why it's important that we talk about it. And I say, like, you guys are like, oh, wait, personal stuff. But it's like, no, we are people who are in this community. And we are people who struggle with mental health, just like all other people. And just because we struggle with mental health, it doesn't mean that's the reason we're into this topic, why we're pursuing no. this topic or why we're <laughs> right. interested. in And it. that's true. And like, we've never talked like I've never said anything like that before. And that's always been, you know, Jamie knows like this shit I've gone through in my life. That's always been a theme. To be fair. To be fair. There are severely mentally ill people that are into like aliens and UFOs. There's maybe extremists there's like in everything. There's theories. And, there's extremists yeah. maybe in there's everything. Maybe there's a correlation, but maybe it's not that you're crazy to see them. Maybe it's that your brain is working on a different level Uh-oh. where you are more introverted and have more thoughts about life. Like mm-hmm. there's been times where I've been so deep in the hole, but yet my inner mind has gone deeper and deeper than if I was like living in the real world, so to say, mm-hmm. like if I was like not, you know, introverting and I'm like out and I'm just like talking to people, I'm going shopping, I'm doing like normal people shit and I'm not dealing with my inner self. Sometimes I feel like when I'm in that inner self is when I have deeper connections to the unseen. Well, maybe like you're using that as some sort of a portal or a way to get through to this 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 or, side down there that's not normally accessible to you. Or yeah, or maybe it's like when you go that internal, you know, going back to like radar, I personally feel that like when it comes to like ETs, interdimensionals, transdimensionals, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like um you literally pop up on a radar. Yeah. Like maybe it's like a aura thing or like an energy spurt. I sometimes I feel like you pop up on a radar. Like deep you, meditation, like when people go into like a deep, deep meditation, sometimes I feel like you literally pop an energy in you. So think about it is as, as okay, think about it as like you're like on like a plane, right? And when you jump in, a big giant spark happens. So everything around says, oh my God, what was that spark? So they want to run over and see what the fuck is there. So these curious things. So what she's saying is when she's down deep in this depression, she's once she hits that rock bottom down there, the deepness of it, a spark goes off and things see her. And so she's able to connect with things that are down there. Mm. I think that yeah. really happens. I think the craziest times in my life is when I talked to myself more than I talked to other people. Mm. <laughs> 
like we're, these these things that you're you're experiencing when you're you know in this hole in this depression it, would you say that they were negative no the only thing negative is thinking that you can't talk to anyone about it mm. but is that's there... changed now this was like more yeah. than 12 13 years ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a yeah. long time and i don't know you guys struggle with this but like i it almost goes back to not to like toot my own third eye do it horn, do it toot, but toot. like the way i see the world is just so much different than like 90 percent of the people in my life it's like mm -hmm. incredibly lonely sometimes and it's very obvious like when you talk to people isn't it that's the part that sucks for me i think well, sometimes it's like i'm always it's like, like am i gonna it? say something that's gonna like make people think i'm fucking crazy and it makes total sense in my own head and i know like it's you know what i mean like it's like you know that meme of like of the guy like sitting on the uh <laughs> sitting on the uh like swing outside looking sad and it's just like when mm -hmm. no one at the party wants to talk about bigfoots you know yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. like that is like my life right there i'm just like oh like these people aren't they aren't down bitches at all see and mine more is as i start to talk to people and i realize that they're like so earthly that i can't have a real conversation with them that i'm always mm -hmm. just like oh fuck it's so surface and so boring to me that's right. like the anxiety that's i the get with someone too. is like i can tell almost immediately that like oh fuck you're not on my level like i can't let me even. let me guess you hate small talk i fucking hate small talk <laughs> all right i'm just like it. i don't want yeah I can't, I yeah. like, I, I love bullshitting, but I can't fucking small talk. Small talk's like, oh yeah, the weather, how was your day? Like I tune out and do not listen. I have to do it a lot at my job and I fucking can't stand it. I always try to harness that hatred of small talk into like, how can I make small talk? And I, I know this is like, sounds kind of narcissistic or like, like I'm manipulating the situation or whatever, but like, how can you make small talk benefit you? Mm -hmm. Like, like, it, I mean, it, and it's not necessarily a nefarious thing. It's like, no, I get what if you're you, saying. If you ask about other people and their interests, like the and right what questions, into, yeah. and and really ask questions about other people, like doors will open for mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Like people really like that shit, and they really they like people. They like to talk about themselves. themselves. So naturally, they like to talk to mm -hmm. people that will ask them about themselves. Yes, exactly. So I like to look at it almost like a psychological experiment when i'm in those Ooh, situations i like that i should start like, doing that yes i'm bored as fuck in this conversation talking to this person but let's see if i can get them to like respect me or en enjoy my company or like foster a friendship or something at least temporarily just you, like even even uber drivers or fucking the guy at the at the uh at gas the check station, stand or something exactly like break yeah. these people's complacency and it's actually very fulfilling it's not just about you know What's that idea sort of, of what is it the, the, the SPs, right? Like you're you're bringing them into your reality. You're like making them a part of what's going on by engaging with them like that. Yeah, and you're creating trust even with like total strangers. Mm -hmm. And I think that once you do that, it can invite more fringe or like esoteric conversations, or you can kind of get a vibe on like you start to open hey, up a little bit more. Yeah, are they are these people down with talking about like alien abductions? Yeah, exactly. Shit, or, you know. Yeah, I mean? exactly. So. No, Where I feel you on go? that one. I don't know. She just disappeared. She went like, I'll be right back. And I just said, okay. Mm. Sometimes sometimes she oh, does. This is that. awkward. I know, right? Should we should we sing a song? Do a little No, no. What I was gonna dance? ask, like, okay, so we've talked pharmaceuticals, we've talked like we have. you know, exercise, sunlight, vitamins, minerals, good mm -hmm. diet. What are your thoughts on like is it homeopathy like where you're like into like natural plants and remedies and hippy dippy uh, you're talking about medicine. more like e eastern medicine right i guess yeah or yeah. like just or native america like you can buy whole books on like hey what plants outside will help with like fucking scoliosis yeah, 100%. Like, what? i think i think that there's something to that personally because you have to think like okay so earth is a self-sustaining uh ecosystem right so you would imagine that everything that we need to survive and fix ourselves is inside of this planet so the idea that you could fix yourself with plants and things like that that's not too far-fetched to me like we are the matter that the earth is made of so it only makes sense that we should be able to fix ourselves with the things that are here and even if it is placebo and there's no actual chemical exactly, thing 100%. behind it, it still works. Exactly. Right? But but that's that whole thing. Like, I'm this... skeptical as fuck about your crystal thing, but like, mm. if it works for you, I'm just if like, If it works, you know. it works. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and that's the whole thing, though. So that's why I'm a... Ugh. People always hate on me. I am not a doctor person. Again, I have my traumas with my issues with doctors. I don't go I try to, to them. 
they kill I'm, more people than anyone. Exactly. Well, that's what I think. But I'm a big. No, they totally listen, do. It's like a statistic. Well, true. But like my crystals and stuff, I don't, I don't get sick that often. I think weed cures everything. And like, I'm living life just fine. I'll probably live till I'm like fucking 200 years old. The rate I'm going. I think that's a but, lot of that has to do with attitude too. Was gonna say, and a part of that I truly believe has nothing to do with the fact. I'm sure that if I was sick with something, doctors could fucking fix me. But the fact is, is that I genuinely believe that all this shit works. So therefore, it works. I'm a big proponent of we create our own reality, and I'm just creating my own reality at all times, and I live in that world. So it works for me. Yeah, and um, I think you like not not the extreme version of this would be like what you were saying where you're in the back of your head just watching mm -hmm. yourself interact with the world yeah but i think that like the healthy version of that is like i almost watch like there are there are black pill days for me where i watch what's happening in the world i'm like holy shit like mm -hmm. this is fucking really concerning you yeah. know yeah don't do it and then like don't do it. I, yeah. I i re-up on like my bill hicks stuff where it's like don't ever be afraid ever this is just a ride and you just kind of kick back and you want to watch it like it's a movie but you also still want to like hold on to like responsibility and accountability and like how you treat other people and stuff it's yeah. not it's not this chaotic what is it uh uh sophism so sophism something like that where it's like it's like a very um uh, sociopath um, quality where you think that you're the only person in the world and you're the main character else, yeah it, yeah exactly it's not like that would be the nefarious version of this but it's like dude like everyone just chill the fuck out case sera sera the, the whatever will be will be will kind be. of mentality mm -hmm. yeah so that's like that's where I try to put like if I'm feeling like very black pilled about things that's where I'm like well it, like this the last 18 months or so has been like really 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 concerning and depressing for me on a lot of levels mm -hmm. really? but at the same time I find it to be really fascinating mm -hmm. that's like, the hard part about it is like it's so distracting how am I super, so un I know I'm so unfazed by any of it I like don't give a shit at all well that's it's not so necessarily weird. a bad thing either it's not that I don't give not, a shit I just ooh, I don't. like I'm I just feel like you only care. maybe it goes back to your own reality thing. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, I don't know, like my, my grandma is so red pilled, I guess you could say that like, she tells me some crazy shit in our walk sometimes. And I'm just like, why do you bother your psyche with this? Yeah, with it. Exactly. <laughs> like, why do you even, and I'm, it's not like I'm trying to be like dumb to the world. I think it's just that I only try to focus on my mission mm -hmm. and helping other people also not see that mission, but find that, that maybe yourself, maybe your own evolution, your own spiritual evolution is something to focus on more than the politics of the world. And I think that it drains people. It mm -hmm. drains people so hard. And I really think that it was made for that. Yeah. People it's like, like oh, they're like the energy news, vampires. The yeah. news, but like, it doesn't matter what news you're tuning yourself into. Like, don't tell me that it's just CNN that's meant to like brainwash you and suck your soul, but then like be addicted to Fox News. Like it does the same thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. let's not look at either of them maybe. I think that that goes back to what we're saying about just balance in general of like keeping perspective. I think it's important to know what in the material world can drip down and affect you in, in your own life. And mm -hmm. I granted like, yes, the media is something that's like, okay, we're freaking out about what they said in the media, but like how much of that like anxiety induced by the media has actually directly affected you in your day to day again it goes back to bill hicks you watch the news and it's like murder death cancer aids blah 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 and then you walk outside and there's like birds chirping and people are mm -hmm. like people oh are well close. they're happy <laughs> yeah it's like oh uh, where the fuck is all this going on you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing um but I, I think you still need to be cognizant of like the patterns of history and and what how bad things can get in the yeah. material world and if you want to do the exit strategy thing applying kind of a hybrid of action in that with what you were just saying Bree is like 
okay, well, that will boil down to like, we are responsible for ourselves. This is our mission on a personal level. On some level, look out for number one. And then your friends and family, if they want to come along, then you just like, just check out. And if, if you're really passionate about avoiding any nefariousness that's coming down through the real world, you got to go out in the woods and just like, you know, build something for yourself out there and just check out as much as you can. I would love to do that. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, it goes back to balance. I don't know if it's about checking out, you know, it's like, it's like being, sometimes I feel like it's about being in the midst of all the chaos the balance of it. Yeah. And being able to find your center there. Like some, don't get me wrong. Like this whole Afghanistan thing, maybe because I've been stuck on 9-11 thing. Every time 9-11 comes around, I don't know what it is, but I get sucked in. I get so sucked in where I mm-hmm. can't stop. I still can't stop. I was like, any, up two times any, now. any documentary yeah. I can find, I, I'm watching every single day. Like you guys have no idea. Like after this, into it. I'm probably going to try to find and someone else's story yeah. that I can cry about. Yeah. And it's like, it bothers me so much, but it's only the personal stories that bother me. And so now I feel like that can't be more relevant than right now that we're viciously pulled out of a situation where we only got in because of what happened 20 years ago. Like this is the anniversary is 20 years ago is the only reason why we were there. Well, why we were there I mean, we, yeah, yeah it pisses me off to no end to be honest but yeah what do you think that is to be to gravitate towards rage or uh is that is that something to like an attempt to transcend into a a, a bigger meeting even though it might be like fabricated or like like a false, what do you mean like 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 you said you're super interested in like really depressing shit like 9 11 <laughs> super emotional about it it's not that it's that but you have to i'm not depressed like, what is what is the like what is the appeal because i do it too like i'm a total rage junkie like i love it's not just like about, liking like, the end of foreign the world policy and yeah no no what it is is that brie brie is an empath right so she just feels a lot of people's emotions so she has a hard time being really subscribed emotionally to the news because it affects her so deeply but But then she gets hooked in and it's like it's like a drug right now this is a drug to her she's feeling these people's energy and she's feed it's like it's doing something for her you're almost purging that desire in one fell swoop on some level right so it's like you don't tap into it regularly so you might fixate it on you get yes, fixated you on one thing and then just purge all that. 9-11 just hits differently. Lack of better words. I it's like her black heart heroin. Hits differently. That's awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is though. Like, but that's it, why Brie uh, doesn't like the news because, and like, I'll tell you a good example. We were at a pool party once and Brie could feel the energy from across the pool. And she was like, almost in tears. Like, oh my God, I feel so horrible. Like that's how much she feels people's energy. You know what's weird? Um, Clap back to fucking drugs and shit. Well, not drugs, but psychiatry. I've had a psychiatrist once tell me that I was an empath and that was like ground shaking because I knew I was beyond the point, but it was the first psychiatrist that has once told me that I was bipolar Mm -hmm. said to me that I was an empath and what I needed to do was focus on grounding my own energy. Mm -hmm. I was like, so shocked because I'm like the normal world says that you don't believe in any of this woo woo shit. So like, that's weird. But anyway, I'm just saying not all psychiatrists. Both of you guys are like susceptible to obviously like spiritual or alien UFO type stuff. Like Mm -hmm. do y'all have y'all noticed a um, sensitivity to like maybe more like ghostly activity? Does it have to do with 9-11? No. <laughs> oh. I, I, I'm, I'm changing just, the subject. You, oh, okay, gotcha. I thought you were like- Before I start crying, I want to talk about ghosts and goblins, all right? Okay. This is the cryptid Wait, but corner, I just want to clear the air that I don't watch. I don't watch any 9-11 thing to purge my own, like being okay. away okay. from the news. I don't that. Do was that. my armchair I'm just fascinated by speculation. The, it's not. That's just, it's just my, Okay. this is a bruise on our country that I think deserves all the recognition of all the time. That's all. I feel you, but yes. No, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to. It's 
it's okay. I just want to clear the air. So you guys like, oh, she, she's she like went, addicted to like to nine eleven exactly. To, no, but it, to okay. cry, she just wants to watch and cry. It's not <clears> that. I just, I know. I, I get you. I get you. I like to hear the stories. Um. So ghosts. <laughs> yeah. So ghosts. Okay. So I've had ghost experiences. Bree's had some interesting experiences. I would say I tend to try to go towards the ghosty experiences because I like it, and Bree tends to try to avoid it at all costs. Honestly. She won't let me play with a Ouija board with her. Fuck that. She won't. Like, she's very like, no, Jamie, you won't. So we both, I, I think Brie has an experience. Honestly, I would, I know. Okay, Bobby, I know that you're going to do your spooky stories. I'm not for everyone podcast. Everyone go listen to it. I think you should have Brie come on and tell her story inside of the church. Only if Brie wants to. We can talk later. Yeah. I would I- love to talk to Adam. I don't know Adam. I love you, Bobby, for sure. Oh, thanks. Love you so much. You should go on and have her go on instead of me. She has We're, a really, really good story. Need, let me just do a quick uh, shout out to yeah, do a shout listeners. Out. Um, I actually need, we are doing, we do Halloween on Not For Everyone podcast from September through Thanksgiving. And we always try to fill those episodes with as many user paranormal experiences as possible, whether that be ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoots, demons, that's uh, so last cool. Year you, last year, uh, Jamie, you did you came on and told us about your. We thought it was what a Wendango. Wendango, yeah. Or a rake or something. Black eyed children. It was a. There was a small child outside my window. We determined that you, in another experience, you did actually interact with a Bigfoot. A Bigfoot, yes. Uh, yes, that's a that was fun. So that was fun. Yeah, if anyone if anyone does have any stories out there and would like to be interviewed, uh, please hit me up on at at pinball bobby on Instagram. What about Twitter? Do you have a Twitter handle? At Pinball Bobby on Twitter. Same? Yeah. Yeah. Do you post things on Twitter often? Mm, yeah, occasionally. I'm more of, I like visual. I like Instagram. He's an Instagrammer. I'm a he grammar. He to TikTok. No, that's Chinese propaganda. Yeah. Oh, that's Lord Chinese, have mercy. That's Chinese social engineering. I, I feel I like you and your, me and your grandma would have a lot of fun. So about. is your shirt. What? Yep. She said, so is your shirt. Motorcade. Propaganda. It's Probably Chinese. made in China. Oh, yeah. Well, that doesn't make it propaganda. Don't hate on the Chinese, okay? You're not going to get fucking COVID from watching TikToks. I'm not saying it's going to give you COVID. I know where that comes from. Cultural, <laughs> yo, it's cultural subversion. and <laughs> to and xenophobia. Most, mostly that's, he's talking about topic. because... <laughs> because it's like it collects your data and then the china so does data. everything and guess what it doesn't matter it doesn't and it matter manipulates and subverts the culture of american <laughs> youth anyway um so it ghosts really doesn't matter if you think about it okay okay it doesn't matter <laughs> so ghosts back to it doesn't affect your everyday no, so life you guys you guys are sensitive <laughs> to things outside of the foreseeable material world yes I'm just curious so i mean would we say that ghost experiences are a regular thing? Have we ever talked to dead people? Like, talk to me about that. Um, it depends I was like, where I am. Yeah, I was like, so me and Bree have very drastically different experiences with like, the other side of the veil. So one of the, the one of the ways I communicate with it is I sometimes just know information. It's really weird. A lot of people call it, I'm just very good at bullshitting. But sometimes... It's I like, I, I feel like, like my brain reaches into the collective subconscious to gather information and it just comes out of my, like it bypasses my brain and it just fucking comes out. And sometimes I even say, I don't even know where I got that from, but I know that it's true. Like there's nothing in me that like, I know 100% that what the fuck just came out of my mouth is a hundred percent true. And so sometimes I watch think- a lot of random I, I do shit. watch a lot of random shit as well, but I, but there's a, a weird feeling that I get <laughs> That's like different oh. than me just like picking a random fact from my brain. And I feel like I can feel me reaching into like the collective subconscious to gather information. So I feel like I have some sort of a tap into it that I have absolutely no control over. It happens all on its own whenever the fuck it wants to. But there's like, I'll give you a good example of one time that it happened is like uh, I had a friend who jumped up on my counter one day and just sat and looked at me. And I just looked at her and I said, oh my God, you're pregnant. And she looked at me so crazy and was like, what the fuck? I just found out like two hours ago. How do you know this? I haven't told anyone. And I said, no, you're pregnant. It's a boy and you're going to have him on my birthday. And she was just like, you're batshit crazy. And sure as shit, she had a boy on my fucking birthday. It's just like, you know, sometimes funny. I say shit and it's just, I don't know where it comes from. And it happens to be true. 
And I know that this was a 50 50 chance granted, but I remember back in like September, I was talking to you or like, Oh no, uh, Biden's definitely going to get elected president. I'm like, you're fucking crazy. There's no way that's happening. No, I told you, I just knew it's just some things I just yeah. viscerally know. And I'm just like, it, it is what it is. So that's kind of my connection to it. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm psychic or anything. Cause I can't use it so to like, my you just, ability. You have good. Uh, what is it? Uh, the intuition gut, uh, my Shopper. third eye is very much open for sure. And I just, I have, there's, I, I, for some reason I can tap into it. I have no control and it, it uses itself in the way it finds necessary. And at this point, I feel like I'm, because of that, I feel like I'm so much more of a tool than I am necessarily, uh, uh, I, want, I don't want to say it like this, but like a human but, being, like I am a human, but I feel so much more like a tool when I'm being tapped into that. Like I'm being used for something so much greater because I have that ability to tap into that. But using that example where you knew your friend was pregnant, like, do you think like there is any kind of like, like physiological thing or like anything you could have picked up on and on their attitude or like, maybe you knew that? Oh, for sure. Oh, I'm, sh I'm like, sure. You know what I'm I mean? Sure. Like, you can kind of add up intuition mm -hmm. into a narrative and expel it and that's kind of the, I guess, but, scientific. I was going to say, but who, sa but who says that that's not also a type of, you know, kind of like being no, psychic, yeah, you're right? right? Like you see these people who are these mentalists who perform on stage, right? And they all say there's tricks and things, but at the end of the day, they're actually doing some version of magic with your brain. They're they're convincing you to think a certain way so that you come to the same conclusion so they can be yeah. like, oh, I knew your answer all along. Are those not also some sort of psychics? You know what I mean? They're able to it's tap like, into uh, to see things in a different way. But it's also like what David Icke says. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're on the, I'm on the right show for this, right? Right, right. He said things like, I'm not like a prophet in any way. Like mm -hmm. I don't attribute my uh, calls of the future to anything really supernatural. It's just like, I recognize patterns and read documents and understand what has happened through history with this specific group of people. Mm -hmm. And here's what seems, and I've, you know, I've done my homework so here is the predictions I'm making. And sure enough, those things more or less on some level seem to be at least somewhat credible. Yeah. So there's always so like some a, type of reasoning that makes sense for that. Right. And it's not always like, I don't, you, you, you don't have to open, like maybe it's a tapping into collective unconscious. Maybe it's not, maybe it's a little bit of both. Who knows? I was going to say a little but bit both because, because it seems like, honestly, what it seems like to me that like tons of people could look at these documents, but it takes a certain type of person to be able to connect those dots. And that's somebody who has that more of yes. that open third Connecting eye dots. who is yes. able to take look again, look at it at this overview instead of this eye level and be like, oh, look, this goes here. Oh my God, this goes to this. So, mm -hmm. and of course, when people think like that, you think that they're fucking crazy because people don't understand his thinking. People don't see that bird's eye view of how all of those things go together and mm -hmm. how it works. And that's he's like, just, yeah, he's looking yeah. at you think about it like fractals right we're all at the at the at the end of the day we're all this fucking stupid shape that like keeps going and going so stupid course, shape. whatever it is you know what i'm talking about the one that looks like the fucking seashell and it keeps oh going and we God. keep the same fucking thing oh like the, the uh, Fibonacci the, sequence, Fibonacci there sequence. You go. exactly right so if you, if you lost exactly if you apply that shit to him <laughs> looking at his documents he's just following the pattern so of yeah, course it's, in it's some capacity it's going to be right exactly it's the work you put into it plus pattern recognition can make you draw fairly accurate accurate conclusions conclusions that, right? yes there's a scientific we, yeah. viewpoint of that that's like when jamie was gonna tell me she was moving she was like i have something to tell you and i was like you're moving to vegas she already knew yeah and i was like but had she shocked vague, me like in passing mentioned that to you in the past? no i was actively avoiding it for weeks and i think that she picked up on it subconsciously and so then when i went to go say i have something to tell you she already knew well yeah. there's um like some of my friends like i don't openly like I was talking about earlier, I don't really openly talk about a lot of the crazier shit that I'm into. What? Like I said, I don't. How are y'all friends? No, right. Well, that's the thing is like, like people are like, oh, that's Bobby. He's like our conspiracy theorist friend. I'm like, oh, not, Lord, have mercy. Not really. And I haven't blatantly come out in like. As that person, it's like this. they pick up on it. But they've like drawn that conclusion just based on like our interactions for some reason. Like I'm yeah. pretty private about it yeah. to some degree. But you know what I mean? It's like, it's you don't weird, tell everyone about your podcast. We do. We're like, hi, we have a podcast. No, I don't because it's like really juvenile. And I don't want <laughs> I was to say really Jew. <laughs> wow. It's controlled by the Jews. <laughs> exactly. Jew um, media. Where no, does that I, come from? I'm so pissed. 
What? I had this conversation with my grandma that people literally think that like Jews run the world. Like, are you out of your mind? I'm going to exit this conversation right now. Yeah, I was like, let's not go there (laughs) at all. Bobby. We'll talk offline. Bobby's like, Bobby's don't like, don't run the world. Bobby's like, I got some shit I gotta tell you, but I don't want to make it public. You might as well. You've got I didn't say anything. Jewish, you have two Jewish families here, so you might as well. No, I'm not. I'm, we're not Did you forget? They don't. I love, they I don't love all of God's people, world, especially the chosen the ones. If anything, uh, we're all going to heaven. So at least I have that. It's like it's like that thing, like that's a Q thing it's too. Like, it's, it's like that thing that's like not all black people are good at basketball, but the majority of the people that are good at basketball are black people. Happen to be African American, so it's that same idea of people it, who are of Jewish we'll just descent leave it happen at that. to be. I get what you're saying. I get what you're <laughs> yes. saying. Isn't Reason. it cute? Yeah. Here's my plant. Is he meditating? Yeah. How did Wait, he die? I have I have this one. He's like, um. How did he die? Wait. He looks like sideshow Bob. How did he have die? This one? He's like, oh, oh. how'd they die? Then, I Did you burn one. them in a fire? Uh, oh, I like that one. He looks like he's vibing. All right, guys. I think now, now that we've talked about the Jews, it's a good place to end for tonight. <laughs> what? No, it's not. We still have 20 minutes. <laughs> you want to keep going? You want to talk some more I about d- some Jews? I love the Jews. Um, love the Jews, Jews don't run the world. Period. Period. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing to say. Like I encouragingly. <laughs> okay, that's uh, we, we just love got you. banned off YouTube <laughs> with Bree's inquiries with Bree's, into anti-Semitism conspiracy theory. Said they don't run the world. But right. Exactly. You, I don't YouTube know if that's doesn't care. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if that's if we can I'm, take that sound clip. I'm confusion. <laughs> Hey, right, I was going to tell you guys. No, we're not leaving. Wait, tell us. Okay, tell Everyone us. Everyone knows it's lizard people. <laughs> it's lizard people, exactly. Mm. Tell us as you eat I... your edible. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I'm on my walk of my grandma, my red pilled grandma. She's like, I have a theory for you. And if you haven't talked about it yet, you should talk about it. I was like, what is it? Give it to us. She's like, the aliens don't come from another planet. They're time travelers. Oh, shit. She's on our time traveler shit. She's like, they're time travelers. And they've come back to see where it all went wrong. So I'm like, yeah, that's a theory. I forgot what it's called. Like, Grandma, it's called, did like, you watch Terminator recently? Yeah, shit. I know. No, it's called like paleo test I could pull, I'm not gonna. Yeah, Michael P. Mm-hmm. Masters is all about that shit. It's called something. It's like paleo test paleo something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I start to like explain it to her. And it's just like I realized that like when you try to explain things like that to people it's so hard because you're like well we have to start from here like it, there's just there's it's so hard to try to like walk them back so then she's like well the people of power though they seem like they could be like from somewhere else and I'm like well there's another theory about like the Draco the Draco reptilians they're shapeshifters so like they're the people of power and then she's like, well, if they're so bad, then wouldn't they have done something to us? And then I'm like, okay, so it started in 1940s <laughs> with the Nazis. And the, I was like trying to like break it down. I'm like, damn, this is hard. Like it goes back real far. Yeah. She's like, well, when grandma. you research it, can you let me know? And I was like, just listen I to our entire podcast. You. I was I like, a- I can literally tell you right now. Like I know it all. It's just. I don't know how to like break it down into layman's terms. Into grandma terms. And it, <laughs> like, I have a uh, book so recommendation weird. for your grandma. Okay, give us. It's called the Genesis 6 Conspiracy. Um, how secret societies and descendants of giants uh, plan to enslave humankind by Gary <laughs> Wayne. It's a very I don't need her very daunting to think book. More of but, humankind no i need her to be like it's okay because like she's 
So yeah, she's very much that mentality of like get behind the like a war is coming, like rah rah, we have to rally. Yeah, of course. She I'm told down this with your grandma, awful 100%. story of like Biden leaving the dogs behind. Oh, she's like, anyway, oh it's just God. a mess. No, it really is. But I was like, fuck. Oh, so I was gonna ask you guys, uh, Jamie. I know you have a Gaia subscription. I yes, I'm a part of it. Gaia is racist when they email me because I put my name in her Gaia as Jew bitch. And whenever they email me, they say, Jew bitch, this is for you. Watch this. That's, and- that's all automated. That is your own <laughs> fault. You do that to yourself. I know. And the Don't first blame- time I saw it. There's so many other things to blame <laughs> Gaia about. I know. The first time I saw it, I really thought it was like, I forgot that I had named myself that. And I was like, these racist fuckers. And I was like, oh yeah, I named myself that. But yeah, I did that. Yeah, I have you Gaia. Be nice. So what are we watching? Be nice so she doesn't shut us down. Right? What are we watching, Brie? On Gaia. Oh no, I was gonna I was gonna talk about how uh Stephen Greer has a show on there. Stephen Greer's in the news. Is he okay? So this whole disclosure show is mm-hmm. with Billy Carson. Mm-hmm. Interesting mix. I didn't mm-hmm. even know they were buddies or whatever. Have you watched it? Yes. Bobby, we'll Billy give you Carson? The, we'll, we'll give you the login. Yeah, Billy, Billy Carson. Carson. Mm-hmm. We'll give you the login for the Gaia. You watch it. With yeah, I'll give I, you the I canceled login. that after I, I, I watched the I watched two of their shows religiously, and then they stopped making them. <gasps> what was it? I hope it wasn't Cosmic Disclosure. No, it was the Deep Space. I think is mm-hmm. what it was called. Deep Space has a season three up. Yeah, and there was another one. Oh, it does. And then yeah. there was yeah. one called I think Ancient Civilizations. Yeah, really for sure. Like they're that. both that up. Was, Those are my favorite like my shows. Methodon. Yeah, they're still going. Those are the Those best ones. Those are my ones. faves. Yeah, they're I still going. It's, it's like it. it's like ancient aliens, but for like people that have graduated past. Exactly. Yeah. Deep Space yeah. is like we'll the, the shit. Deep, we'll yeah. Deep Space, I felt was like the bomba show ever. I was like, fuck everything else. Like Deep Space has it for you. Anyway, there's a new there's a new uh season out. So. I actually really like the fact that Stephen Greer is doing this. I wish that he was out more because mm-hmm. I feel like he's the only People speaker right level person that's out there though. That's like against I every agree. other narrative. I agree. We're Stephen Greer fans over here. People are fucking. See, controlled opposition though. That's what a lot of people say. People say. Wait, that what do you mean? Opposition. Tell me. Tell me. Controlled Tell opposition. Me. What are all the theories hit so, me? Right now, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really dive into his work. I've listened to interviews with him, but I don't, I don't know. UFO Twitter and most of the internet right now is just like, he's ba- like, basically it's just like, because he's so anti-government and everyone is so government, he is the new villain basically is what it boils Oh, he sounds like my kind of today. person then. Yeah. So they made him a villain. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. So because, because he is not like, yes, these government documents and he's like, fuck these government documents very loudly. Everyone's like, oh, he's a fucking hack. He's full of shit. This and that, this and that. They're just like, I respect him more now. Him. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, he's trying to make money with his CE5 app and he's making all these movies and making all this money and da, 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 da. And that's really what he's about. He's just about making money and he's not about these stories or getting like contact out. And it's like, they're just vilifying him. And it's just Wasn't exhausting. like Stanton Friedman really like not into that guy? I don't, I don't want to speak know. on his behalf. I, I feel like know. the nuts and bolts community is all like, that guy I runs a cult. Know. Well, a lot of I people, just they say that about anything. Say, yes, a lot of people say when it comes to Stephen Greer, the word cult is thrown around a lot. Yes, 100%. which is so stupid. It's, it's like, so do you stupid. even know what the fuck a cult means? And like, again, we're not, we don't give Stephen Greer money. Like, we're not providing him money in any sense. Like, we, Stop we don't chilling for Greer. Well, I was like, we don't think he's some god or anything. I genuinely enjoy the work and the documentaries that he mm-hmm. does. I wish more people did them. He does them well and tastefully with yeah, actual what, information. What unlike, really happened unlike, with that little baby alien skull thing they found? Like, the, the, the little at a comma, a comma. At a what was comma. The, whatever turned out with that at a comma so that was all few, the buildup so the thing is is there's a few different stories about it and one of the stories about it is that when he went to go get all of this stuff tested that the testing facility basically gave them fake results saying that everything was normal because yeah, they were so terrified Gary Dolan like when you when you test put any it, bigfoot yeah. dna they do the same gary thing. dolan from stanford university was the one that came out like, yeah, I'll check all this shit out and went on record for <laughs> it. And then was the one that retracted everything because of course they're going to lose funding. So yeah, Gary Nolan from Stanford University. 
So then that's the problem. So then a lot of people say that he's some type of hack or whatever, but it's like, no. And he's not the only one who's come out with this kind of thing who have come to these places. We actually interviewed uh, the FBI agent, uh, John DeSouza, who was talking about that as well. And he was basically saying the same thing. He was like, no, the, these these things were tested and they purposely didn't give us the test results because they don't, they don't want to be uncredited or take their funding away from them. They're genuinely terrified to admit that this was alien. Yeah, yeah and I don't, I, I don't think Greer is intentionally trying to deceive anyone and again no. i don't follow his work that closely but i do think there there are incentives like i think he he does get clout and influence and money sure. from a lot of these endeavors and there's sure. nothing wrong with that either but i'm just saying you have to kind of well, and then consider it, that it, it comes down to that at the end of the day like people keep hating that he makes money on it or whatever but like he's funding being able to do this for a living there's a big yeah. difference between like taking everybody's money and forming a cult and like living in a giant mansion to like you know oh i like that brie to you know using this money that he's getting from generating these things that he's doing so that he can make these incredible great documentaries that do have all yeah. of this information i'm inside super of it. jealous of anyone that can make money off of like exactly but he's not really like, that guy's making, an ER doctor. Like, like okay so the last movie was they did mostly out of pocket and exactly. they did charge for it. They put it totally yeah. out. Yeah. Well, they put it totally out on YouTube. And they that's were what like, I'm saying. No. He's he's not he's not making money off of it. He's making a living off of it. And there's a very big difference. Everything in the world costs money. And I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong for the give and take of things. Amen. Amen. But it's Amen like with psychics. That. So we were like, what? She wants to pay me $50 to tell me my fortune. If she knows, she should just tell me. Well, this is her job. She's mm -hmm. not working at Best Buy so she could tell you. Exactly. And just like if if we had sponsors on the podcast, we would all quit our jobs and do this shit full time. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, it's a give and take to everything. Sponsors don't uh, yield that much. I no. wouldn't quit but, my job. But I will say I know. The, uh, the class, I just wanted to end on this. The classic yes. uh, like normie criticism of people that are into this stuff is, uh, well, that guy's just trying to sell books. Mm -hmm. I'm like, motherfucker, you think selling a book on UFOs and pyramids is going to pay your fucking bills? Yeah, You're, exactly. You, you don't make money. Like, you are you are a dumbass. Like, yes, exactly. you don't know how incentives work. Mm -mm. Like, you're not going to, like, like, if you build something, like, maybe the, the David Childresses of the world that have, like, a whole publication, like, whatever. Exactly, it's way but, different, like, yeah. Printing books for the amount of work that it takes to write 300 pages get it published and put it out you're making fucking chicken feed even then so, like how much is david kill just shit. really worth like <laughs> well, you know what i mean like i'd like to look at that he's on him. tv yeah the, the, those guys get paid to do tv gigs for sure did you, did you know that he actually well, whatever. Has a, he has a bookstore that him and his wife run to this day that sounds awesome i want to go I, I will find out where it's at so we can all go and visit it. But yeah, his wife from, every day. I think he's day, from Colorado. I, I want to say it might be in Colorado. That sounds about right. But yeah, he, him and his wife run a fucking bookstore there. And he's there when he's not traveling and doing ancient alien stuff. He's there at the bookstore. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. I know. All right, guys, we love like you all. Trip. We had so much fun this week. We'll come back next time and talk about some other bullshit. We love you all. Mentally be safe. Physically be safe. Spiritually be safe. And uh Oh no, we let love go you. and let, let go and let the universe everybody. Not for That's everyone podcast. One. Listen to Not for Everyone podcast as well. 100%. All those things that Jamie just said. All right, bye guys.